I travel quite often. I have family that live in England and family in the US. So I spend a fair amount of my time traveling from one side of the Atlantic Ocean to the other. Last month, I flew twice and the flight experiences could not have been any more different. The first flight was London to Boston. As we taxied towards the runway, the pilot welcomed us aboard and said, our flight time today will be six hours and 25 minutes. I expect a smooth flight, perhaps some turbulence two thirds of the way across the Atlantic. The wind is coming in from the east in London with rain, temperatures around the low 40s in Fahrenheit, five in Celsius. And true to form, everything he predicted happened almost to the minute. The week later, I joined my father on a hot air balloon flight. It was such a good experience. We'd never done this before, so we were slightly nervous, but we arrived in good time and waited in the corner of the field where we were meant to meet the team. A few minutes later, a truck towing a trailer with what looked like a giant picnic basket on the back made its way across the field. And two friendly people introduced themselves, one as the pilot and the other guy as the person who drives around trying to find you after you've landed somewhere. It was a funny, awkward moment. Other people that were on the flight with us kind of giggled, but there was some nervousness in the air. Uh, before they began to set the balloon up, they did something that I thought was quite unusual. They went to the back of the vehicle and produced a small helium balloon, a, a red balloon, like a, a child's birthday party. And they let the balloon go and they, they watched it climb into the sky. And I'm guessing to see which way it was going. And we watched in silence. And then the pilot said to the other person, that's not going the right way. Of which he said, yeah, you're right. The forecast was that the wind would be going due west. That's heading south. It's not meant to be doing that. There was his pause. No one knew what was going on and what this meant. Somebody said, is everything okay? In which in a very laid back way, the pilot said, yeah, it's fine. Everything will be fine. Let's get on. And they began to unload and inflate the giant balloon. They were so relaxed. Before we climbed aboard, there was a short safety briefing and lots of people had questions. Questions like, do you know where we're going? Which the answer was no. Someone said, well, how do you know when we get there? And they couldn't answer that either. Someone said, well, how long will we be in the air for? Of which the pilot said, well, we've got about two hours worth of gas on board. So as long as we find a field somewhere to land before then, I'm sure we'll be fine. The pilot was so relaxed, which helped us to relax, but it was such a contrast from the accuracy of the prediction on the flight the week before from Boston to London. Eventually it was time, the balloon was fully inflated and the pilot called us to climb aboard. With one hand on the burner and the other on a rope that tethered the balloon to the vehicle, the pilot gave the signal. The rope fell slack and we began to rise. Quickly at first we rose above the field and then drifted above the rooftop of a nearby building. The landscape below shrinking quickly beneath our oversized picnic basket. Any anxiety of the flight, not least fueled by the laid back approach of the pilot, melted away. We rose effortlessly, leaving the sounds of life on the ground behind before entering a much quieter space. The burner broke the silence from time to time, but other than that, the silence, peace, and tranquility was all around us. As we continued to climb, people, cars, and buildings were replaced by unending countryside, with spectacular views in every direction. It was breathtaking. If you've ever opened a Bible to page one, you find yourself in this book called Genesis, which means beginnings. And in the first book of the Bible, we read that God formed man, mankind, men and women, and he breathed into their nostrils the breath of life. And it says in Genesis 2, and the man became a living being. The breath, the wind of God, blew into a person and they became a living being. When a baby is born, there is a moment 
when they take their first breath. The first breath they take, they inhale and then they exhale. It is as if there is a life in creation in the air around them that is a gift that is offered to them and they breathe it in. And in that moment, life begins. In the New Testament, in John's Gospel, we read of Jesus teaching about a new life, about a new beginning, and Jesus describes it as a breath, as a wind. And he says, the wind blows where the wind blows. You don't know where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. What does it mean to be born of the Spirit? Back to the balloon. As we climbed into the sky, I commented on how amazingly silent and still it was. There's no turbulence, no friction, I said to my father, just total peace. Then I looked down and noticed the trees below us and how we were, despite the sense of stillness, traveling at some speed. And it dawned on me, of course there was wind. Wind that had already carried us several miles from the launch field. We just didn't notice or feel it because we were moving with the wind. It was as if we had become one with the wind. There was no turbulence, just peace. And yet at the same time, we weren't stationary. We were moving, we were traveling, we were going somewhere. I wonder if the experience of the balloon flight captures something of what it means to be born of the Spirit. There is peace and tranquility, yet movement and energy and life. This is going somewhere. For me and many other people I know who love and follow Jesus, there is this moment when we say yes, when we recognize that we've messed up and fallen short and we've asked him to come in and change us. And in that moment, it is like we take a new breath. And in that moment, life begins.